This presentation covers functions, another simple math review. Uh, a function is a relation of any set of ordered pairs. Here the ordered pairs represent A or B or X and Y, whatever it is that you're plotting. In the independent variable being uh, the first number and the dependent variable being the second number. So um, the set of, of first components in the ordered pairs is called the domain of the relation. And the set of second components is the range of the function. So given the relation 3, 5, 1, 2, 4, 4, and 0, 3, the domain would be uh, the minimum value of the first uh, number um, to the uh, maximum value of the first number, and the range would be the minimum value of the second number, in this case 2, and then uh, followed by the uh, maximum value of uh, the second number. In algebra, it's common to represent relations by equations, not necessarily data, in two variables. Um, so y equals x cubed is, a, is an equation in two variables. x is the independent variable, and y is the dependent variable. Given a value of x, I can find y by doing a cubic. The equation divide, defines the relation of the two components of the ordered pairs, and unless it's specified, it's assumed it means for any choice of independent variable. We have an equation like y equals 2x minus 6, we can write this in functional notation as f of x is 2x minus 6. Now that just means that we replace the y with f of x. The independent parameter may be any symbol. For instance, probably the most common symbol and the most common independent variable uh, parameter uh, physically is uh, time. Uh, especially in uh, electronics or electricity. So f of t here is vt plus 35. But it could be anything. It could be the, like length f of l. could be l squared plus 7l. And we have to say that a function um, needs to be a relationship in which no two ordered pairs have the same first exponent and a different second component. For any x, there's only one y. But for any y, there may be more than one x. The way we find whether a relationship is a function or not is by using the vertical line test. And if we graph the function, uh, a graph is not the graph of a function if a vertical line can be drawn that intersects the graph at more than one point. This is the case at right. This is a radical plotted, and you'll notice there are two values of, of y for any value of x, and therefore it's not a function. But a parabola, either one that's uh, like the one shown or the inverse of it, where it's flipped upside down, that passes the vertical line test and is quite a natural uh, and ha a happy little function. Graphs of equations in two variables. Now, graph is the set of all points which represents solutions to an equation containing two variables, it's called the graph of the equation. So you could graph a couple of equations by finding a number of ordered pairs, which are solutions, and then plotting them on a piece of graph paper. Or you can buy yourself a graphing calculator, and it will do all this for you. So y equals 5x plus 3 is a linear graph. We know because x is raised to the 1 power in this equation that it's going to be a linear plot. The second equation, however, y equals 2x squared minus 4, is not a, it's a nonlinear graph. It's a perfectly fine function. But when you plot it, you will find it's not a straight line. How do we graph equations in two variables? First of all, isolate the dependent variable. Get it on the left-hand side, the equal sign, and everything else on the right. Construct a table of values showing several solution points. 
the calculator does this. Plot these points in a Cartesian coordinate, rectangular coordinate system, and connect the dots. Intercepts are the easy way to plot graphs. The y-intercept occurs where the graph crosses the y-axis. The x-coordinate of the y-intercept is therefore zero. The x-intercepts occur where the graph crosses the x-axis. Here the y-coordinate of an x-intercept is zero. We will soon see why there is only one y-intercept, but there can be more than one in x-intercept. Graphs of equations in two variables. How to find an intercept. To find the y-intercept, simply solve the equation for y when x equals zero. To find the x-intercepts, solve the equations for x when y equals zero. Here are some examples. y equals, equals 7x minus 3, and y equals x squared over 2 plus 1. This is a linear equation. Um, this is certainly something you've probably seen before. Here, y is equal to x. So when x equals 4, y equals 4. And when x equals 7, y equals 7. And so given the x, we know that the y is going to be the same thing as, as the x. Now, the, the line that you get has a slope of 45 degrees. And it kind of splits. It's a diagonal of the square formed by the x, any square formed by the x and y axis. This is not a diagonal of a square, it's the diagonal of a rectangle. And that's because we've introduced the number 2 into the equation for the straight line, giving the line a slope of 2. In other words, you get 2 times the change in y as any change in x. So, for x equals 3, y equals 6. And for x equals 5, y equals 10. Example 3 is where the slope is less than 1. Here I only get one vertical division change for any two horizontal changes. So, for instance, if I, um, if I take um, y, uh, x equal 4, I get y equal 2. If I get x equal to 6, I get half of that for y, which is only 3. So you can see that this covers um, lines which are closer to horizontal. Here we have a, a formal, sort of a formal, or first uh, definition, at least a graphic definition of what slope is. It's the delta y over the delta x. So let's look at the blue triangle formed by this straight line. First of all, we can see that there is roughly one, two, three, four, five, six uh, little y blocks for every two um, delta x blocks or delta x blocks. So that said that we could say that delta y over delta x is equal to a constant, which is equal to three. So we can see that the equation for this graph, if we weren't giving it, given it, would be y equals three x. The, the line goes through the origin because when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0. We can change that. And in this graph, we do change it. And so we can now move um, up. The, whole, the entire curve can be shifted upward by just adding a 4 to the equation. But so we, here we, we've shifted it up from an intercept of y equals 0 to an intercept of y equals 4. So here, y equals x plus 4, because when x is 0, y is equal to the 4. Reading graphs is extremely important. And we'll discover that um, not only in this course, but in any of the technically oriented courses that you may be taking in this curriculum. Here, I've increased the slope to 2, and I've kept the intercept at 4. Here I've changed the slope to 0.5 and, um, and kept the uh, intercept at plus 4. Here are two that most people mess up. If I have zero slope, the line is a horizontal line. It's only equal to the constant. So here y is equal to 8 at, for the blue line and y is equal to plus 4 for the red line.
here's a slope that's negative. Here, the intercept is still 8 because when x is 0, y is equal to 8. But we can see that the slope is negative. So I get for a change in x from, say, 4 to 5, I get a, a change in y um, from um, um, 5 to 4. Here again, I've now given it a negative slope of 2. I still have an intercept of y equal 8. I have an x-intercept of um, uh, x equal 4. And I have a slope of minus 2.